Hello and welcome to the Unity Scripting Tutorial Series presented by Hypercube Games, where I show you how to get better with working with scripting in Unity 3D. So let's get started with what we are doing today. Today we're going over saving and loading in Unity. This is done using player prefs, specifically when wanting to store integers, strings, or floats, for example, in a high score system. So let's get started with the main methods that you will be working with when using player prefs. These are get int, get string, and get float. The other ones are set int, set string, and set float. So what do these all do? So first of all, set int, string, or float all set the value depending on what value type you're using. It does what the name implies. It just sets an integer, string, or float to be saved. So let's write an integer player pref known as amount and set it equal to one. To write this out, simply just write player prefs dot set int open and close parentheses, and inside of these, you're going to put in quotation marks the name of our player pref, which in this case is amount, a comma, and then following that comma, we're going to have the value we're setting this player pref, which in this case is one. Top that all off with a semicolon, and you have just made a set int player pref. For get, instead of setting a value, you're testing for one. It does exactly what the name implies. This means that get, int, string, or float are all primarily used in if statements. So when writing this out, if we want to test if our player pref of amount that we made earlier is equal to one, we could do it just like this. So in our if statement, in the, uh, in the open and close parentheses, we can write player prefs dot get int open and close parentheses once again, and in quotations, we write the name of the player prep we're testing for, which in this case is amount, and then our operator, which in this case is going to be setting for an, an exact number, which is two equal signs, and we're testing for the number one, so you put the number one. So that's pretty much it for player prefs. Now before I show you a practical example of how this is used, allow me to tell you a few more useful methods that I think you should know. Player prefs delete all delete all values and player prefs that are stored in your game. Now please use this method with caution as it can be a bit catastrophic. Player prefs delete key deletes a specific key that you ask for by putting it in quotations within the open and close parentheses. And finally, player prefs save, which just saves all the player prefs to disk, which can be useful to make sure that player prefs are saved. So here we are in the practical example that I have set up for demonstrating player prefs uh, and their practical uses within a game. And this is what I've come up with. It's essentially a cache counter. So let's go ahead and look at the finished product. So here's what we have. Uh, it's essentially just a simple cache counter where we can press like a plus button here and it allows us to increase the amount of money we have and decrease it with buttons that we have here. For example, I'm gonna give myself about $10 um and then i can actually uh leave the scene here and i can come back you'll see the ten dollars are saved and i know i never really explained uh what player prefs really do but here they are here's exactly what they do essentially what they do is uh they just save whatever you have now i have mentioned the word save but i never really mentioned how it fully works and here's what i'm talking about I'm essentially talking about it saving whatever uh the player pref is uh Throughout the, throughout the scene, no matter how many times you reload the game or do certain things with it. So how does it all work? Allow me to show you uh, by loading up this money save script. All right, so here we are in the money save script where, and I'm going to explain this whole thing just about line by line. So here we are in, uh, up here in line seven, you can see that we have an integer variable known as money uh, a money display and speaking of which these two lines here uh, line number 22 and line number 8 are both just for displaying the money onto the screen so you can see it so in reality these two are not as important as they seem what was really important is this money variable so in our start function or method here uh, we're setting money equal to player press dot get int saved money which is essentially just setting money to equal whatever the player pref that is called save money is at the current time. Now, if you don't have a player pref uh, of saved money inside of your player prefs that you have, this will default to zero when it comes to an integer. Uh, so no matter what, it'll always either equal zero or whatever saved money is. So in our update function here, we're testing whether or not a change happens 
uh, when we compare the saved money player pref to the money variable. Because over here, in these two methods, we are just adding or subtracting, which changes the money variable. And by changing it, we need to test whether or not a change has occurred. So once a change happens, player pref's uh, dot set int save money occurs. Um, and essentially what's happening here, once again, we're testing for whether or not saved money, the player pref, is not equal to money. So if there is a change that occurred, go ahead and make a player pref called saved money and set uh, its value equal to our money variable. Once we do this, go ahead and save. This is just for a uh, uh, making sure kind of measure. And that's pretty much it. So I already explained these two. These are just run whenever the button uh, is pressed. For example, when we press add, um, the money is added by one. When we subtract, money is subtracted by one. And in our reset cache, which I actually never mentioned just yet, if we go back over here and launch up the game, you'll be able to see this reset cache button. And when I press it, it resets the cache right back to zero. So how does it do this? It's quite simple. All it does is set our, is delete the key of save money from our player preps list, and then money is set all the way back to a default at zero. And that's pretty much it for how player prefs work in general. I've shown you all the syntax and the basic and general gist of player prefs, and you've seen a practical example. Thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, be sure to subscribe for more videos just like this. And keep in mind, this isn't the tutorial series that is going to be uh, episode by episode. It's more or less just specific small little scripting tutorials that whenever you need something to know, it's mainly a uh, uh, commenter-driven series. So if you want to comment what you want to learn next, please go ahead and let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, uh, that is just about it for this video. Once again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.